Welcome back to History Class with Dr. W and our continuing discussion of Vietnam. In the previous lecture, we talked about the reign of Ming Mang and the challenges he confronted in overseeing a divided but attempted to unify Vietnam. As we'll see in this lecture, it is ultimately the French who will arrive to overthrow and consume Vietnam in this weakened state. In this lecture, We'll lay the groundwork for that conquest and talk about the conditions that the French were able to capitalize on. And in the following lecture, we'll talk about the conquest itself. Ultimately, it was the French who arrived to overthrow and consume Vietnam in its fragile state. The French invaded in 1858 under the context of persecution of Catholics. However, Zhao Long in the early 1800s would never have anticipated such a thing. Catholics, even at the time of the French invasion, never accounted for more than 5% of the population. There were two things that sparked the significance of Catholicism in Vietnam. One was a renewed emphasis on Catholic missionary activity by the French, beginning in 1815. The second was the heightened persecution of Catholics, along with other groups, under the rule of Ming Mang. As he implemented regimented Confucianism, Ming Mang persecuted many groups, including Muslims, Buddhists, and others. Catholics were only one of the groups suffering in that period. In 1833, Ming issued the first kingdom-wide prohibition of Catholicism. At that point, Churches were destroyed, congregations scattered, and many Catholics fled the country. Others were martyred, at times in horrific fashion. From 1833 to 1835, Catholics achieved heightened notoriety in Vietnam because they joined the revolt led by Lee Van Coy. Lee Van Coy was the adopted son of General Lee Van Duyet, who had been Zhao Long's closest ally the man left in charge of the South when he moved north. Remember, some of the friends and allies of Jia Long did not support Ming in the South. Lee Van Khoi launched a rebellion against Ming and recruited various groups, including Catholics, to support him. The revolution succeeded in the short run, seizing six southern provinces and challenging Ming's supremacy. After two years of fighting, however, Ming was able to subdue the insurrection and crush his rivals in violent fashion. In Saigon, 1,200 men and women were buried alive. Countless others were executed and their family homes and heirlooms destroyed. Catholics were only one group involved, but for Ming they came to symbolize any challenge to his rule. He had many Catholic missionaries publicly executed obviously a practice the French could not tolerate lightly. Ming's attack against French missionaries coincided with a time when French expansion was undergoing a revival. French missionary activity was also in a period of reinvigoration as a Catholic king had taken the crown in, 19, in 1815. A growing literary media in France also publicized the persecution of Catholics in Vietnam and called for action. These trends reached a peak in 1852, when Napoleon III, a Catholic monarch, assumed the crown. Napoleon III was determined to restore France to international greatness. Had Ming persecuted Christians during a different era in history, perhaps his actions might have escaped notice, or at least not been harshly punished by the French. With all the factors mentioned above, however, Ming's persecutions simply could not be ignored. Following Ming's death in 1841, his successors, Thieu Tri and later Tu Duc, did their best to hold Vietnam together in the face of both internal and external threats. In 1842, the British took Hong Kong and continued expanding down the Chinese coast. In 1847, both the United States and France obtained trading concessions in Shanghai. 
1847 as well, the French Navy intervened in Da Nang, a port city not far from Hue, to free Catholic missionaries. Win leaders responded by closing off their nation, confining foreign merchants to certain ports, and limiting travel of their own citizens. They hoped to ward off potential colonizers from China, Britain, France, or elsewhere. Win leaders also nationalized the rice industry, adopting increasingly sophisticated weapons and began preparing for a clash with the outside world. Coincident with these geopolitical threats, other events conspired to weaken Vietnam. A cholera epidemic swept across the kingdom in the late 1840s, combining with famine to kill some 10% of the population. The court struggled to provide enough rice to relieve this crisis. In order to survive, many peasants sold their land to wealthy landlords and became homeless and unemployed. Corruption reigned as the capital in Hue could not pay enough to its vast army of civil servants. Unrest grew. Ming's successors responded with more violence and repression. A cycle emerged. Even before the French intervention, more than 400 revolts arose to challenge Win rule in the first half of the 19th century. This domestic unrest, combined with the continued challenge of people like the Khmer and the Cham, overtaken by Vietnam but still resistant, to further weaken Win rule. As we'll see in our next lecture, it is the French who ultimately intervene to fill this void.